The following is a live broadcast of a Lone Star Community Radio program. Recorded and broadcasted live on IRLoneStar.com, Connors FM 104.5, 106.1, and Facebook.com slash IRLoneStar. For more information on this show, please visit our show page at IRLoneStar.com slash shows. To sponsor or donate to this program, visit our donate page at IRLoneStar.com slash donate, or email us at lscrstudios at gmail.com, or give us a call at 936-666-1084. Lone Star Community Radio production and broadcast is possible by folks like you. So sponsor and donate today. You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW LP Conroe and 106.1 KZCC LP Conroe. And worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Extension Hour. I'm Amy Ressler, County Extension Agent for Family and Community Health here in Montgomery County. And this is the Extension Hour. We talk about our people, our programs, our partnerships, and we've got a room full of people today. So we have our illustrious boss, Eric Good. Zimmerman, with us. Good morning, Amy. <laughs> and we have Brandon Gregson and Justin Sines. And so they're, they're veterans on the show, right? You guys have been here before and we've talked about different things. But let's go ahead and um, have each of you introduce yourself just in case people have not met you before or seen you on the show before tell us a little bit about you sure amy my name is eric zimmerman i'm the district extension administrator for southeast extension district nine and that comprises 18 counties that uh that run from the louisiana border which is orange county all the way as far west as lee county which is giddings texas and galveston county on the on the coast all the way up to bryan college station and brazos county and so my role is to uh, work with the county agents in those 18 counties that serves 6.8 million residents of the state of Texas for uh, support of those programs and, and ensuring that the, we're meeting the needs of Texans. And in terms of a, a state, a district within the state, we are the most populous or the second? We are the most populated. Okay. Okay. We're the largest staff, of course, when you're the most populated district of the 12 that comprise the 254 counties in Texas. Uh, you're going to have the largest staff. And then we've got a, a uniqueness to where we've got a, a county extension agents that serve every program area that we have dedicated uh, positions for in terms of horticulture, family community health, 4-H, urban youth, marine, horticulture, you name it. And so we've got those with AgriLife, but also we team with our partners with the Cooperative Extension Program with Prairie View A&M University uh, with their extension program as well. Okay, and so our superstars from Montgomery County, we've got Brandon Gregson. Introduce okay. yourself. Uh, <laughs> as Amy said, Brandon Gregson, I... In terms of program area, uh, I'm responsible for agriculture and natural resources for Montgomery County, um, role being to serve um, adult audiences here in terms of agriculture production. Um, and then I also assist with some youth programming and some interdisciplinary programs that we do throughout the office. So um, in a nutshell, that's me. And Justin. Um, my name is Justin Sines. I'm the urban youth agent here in Montgomery County. So urban youth, we do the non-traditional side of 4-H. So we do a lot of STEM with our robotics program, and we're doing a lot of curriculum enrichment with Hatching in the Classroom. We're, we extend our 4-H curriculum into our, um, our schools here in Montgomery County. And we also have other awesome people who work at um, the Montgomery County office as well that just aren't here this morning. So we have uh, Michael Potter, who is our horticulture agent. We have uh, Michelle Mahalik, who is our 4-H agent. And we also have Michelle Scaife, who is our BLT, or Better Living for Texans agent. So, And then we've got a couple of program assistants. We've got an awesome support staff. So in Montgomery County, we do have um, a great group working in extension. Um, of course, like I said, for, for Eric. So Eric is in town because we are working on some legislative visits. Um, sometimes folks don't really understand like where and why, well, why we exist and, and like kind of where we get our funding. And so one of the, we get, it's, it's kind of a complicated um, formula, but some of it comes from the federal government. Some of it comes from the state government, state legislature through the university, not through the university, but through the system. And then we also get some funding from the county as well. So we're working on making visits just to help our legislators understand that. But, um, you know, we thought we might share just a little bit with the public also to know, because people have questions about that. Sure. You know, the, the, the unique thing about 
AgriLife Extension, and, and, and that's our name in terms of the agency uh, under the A&M system. And so we're an agency that, again, uh, is, is very unique as compared to the other agencies within the A&M system. And I say that because we have individuals and county offices in all 254 counties in the state. So we have the actual presence at the county level. And so uh, you talk about funding, one of the neat things and one of the unique things, and it goes back to our history in relation to uh, one of our previous names is Cooperative Extension, and we cooperate with county commissioners' courts and county government in relation to funding, but also uh, having those individuals like yourselves uh, serve the, the residents of the county that uh, you're hired to, to, to work in. And so, you know, every two years we do uh, we do have to go to uh, Austin to to uh, for budgetary requests. Uh, and, and so it, they're in part funding source uh, in, in terms of, of support for county extension agents, in addition to the county commissioner's court here in Montgomery County. And so uh, we do we are viewed to, in, to an extent with federal dollars. Uh, we are have state dollars and, and county dollars as well. And so, so one of the unique things in relation to the A&M University system is, is we're not tied directly to the A&M system in relation to funding with tuition and things of that nature. We're a standalone agency. And so every two years, we go to Austin and our director, Dr. Jeff Hyde, goes to Austin to justify our existence and the things that we do and some of the unique things that we offer the state. Uh, one of the things that, you know, is a high point that we're going to talk about probably today more than anything else is the response that we have uh, enacted in relation to COVID-19 and what we've done as an agency to assist with the recovery, the opening up of taxes, and ultimately the, uh, the education of our, our residents here in Montgomery County and throughout the state. Yeah, and, so, and um, I would just mention nationally, it is called the Cooperative Extension. So one of the USDA yeah. agencies is Cooperative Extension, and that really is what we do, cooperate and trying to meet the needs of each individual community, county, the state, yeah. and some of the national um, issues that are there as well. But we really are very locally focused, um, particularly here in Montgomery County. Um, so we're visiting with legislators and we're talking about um, some of the things we were doing. And so you had mentioned um, disaster assistance and recovery, and that was actually a couple of years ago. That was one of the big things that we were looking at in terms of a funding and able to yeah, get the, that, right? The, the nice thing was, is we were able to to, to go to Austin, and this was in response to Hurricane Harvey and our response in relation to animal supply points, assisting agriculture producers and livestock producers in addition to, to homeowners with their pets and displacement due to Harvey. Uh, and, of course, you know, our agents were, were deployed in strike teams uh, and, and, and coordinating those kind of events, but also uh, we were also coordinating shelters and, and, and education through our Texas Eden uh website and things of that nature in relation to uh, disaster assessment and recovery. And so one of the things we were able to go to uh, our legislators uh, two years ago was to request funding to address future issues if they may arise in relation to emergency management, not knowing that COVID-19 was going to be anywhere on the horizon. And we were able to get that as an exceptional item. And what that was an extremely nice and beneficial because it allowed us to hire an additional 19 extension agents throughout the state to help coordinate disaster response. Of course, we were in the process of filling those positions during this biennium <laughs> when COVID-19 hit. And so since uh, it was, uh, I guess it was basically around March the 20th is where I kind of put my trigger point because we were in that week of, of Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo and things went from normal to completely abnormal yeah. in a blink of an eye, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? And so those, those individuals within our DAR unit or Disaster Assessment and Recovery were hired and two days later they were deployed to... Uh, uh, our regional supply points and our armories throughout Texas to assist with um, the the uh, delivery of PPE as a first thing first step uh, was to deliver deliver PPE to all of our uh, medical providers yeah. to keep them open and we did that with DAR agents but also county extension agents like Amy and like Brandon and like Justin and Michelle and Michael Potter and those things uh, or those individuals and so they were there to support uh, it, uh, our our, uh, our partners with Teeks and our partners with Texas uh, National Guard and, of course, our DAR units. And so that was step one was to go out and make sure that our medical providers were getting the proper PPE that they needed to stay open to address 
health concerns. Yeah, and it, we've probably heard the term often enough now, but PPE is personal protection equipment, so masks and gloves and um, hand sanitizer, yes. sometimes coming from <laughs> distilleries and that kind of thing. But um, so PPE, that's what that is. And then there was one other acronym that you mentioned that I wanted to make sure that we clarify. So you said Texas Eden. So E-D-E-N is actually a an acronym for Extension Disaster Education Network. Correct. And we have a website um, dedicated to that that has a lot of really useful information on that. And that is Texas Help. H-E-L-P dot T-A-M-U dot E-D-U. So that's a really good place to get some information about all kinds of disasters. And so, of course, right now we're thinking about COVID-19, um, but there's a lot of hurricane, flood, wildfire, other kind of disasters that are on there, too. Um, I, you know, I'm thinking of the ones that happen here most often, but it, it kind of covers everything. All right, so we're going to take a little bit of a break. We're going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit more about our COVID response and the kinds of things that we've done in Extension. Um, I feel like we've been very progressive and um, innovative and challenged and all of those good things. So we'll be back in just a minute, but this is the Extension Hour here on Lone Star Radio, 104.5, 106.1, and we'll be back right after this. From the beginning, the main purpose of the Cooperative Extension Service has been to change human behavior by teaching people how to apply the results of scientific research. By utilizing a holistic, multi-level approach, Extension Family and Community Health Programs encourage health and well-being for everyone. Addressing values, concerns, and needs with reliable science-based information, Extension Programs help people lead healthier lives. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make their lives better. Listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture. Welcome back. We're here talking with Eric Zimmerman, who is our District Extension Administrator um, for District 9. And we've got Brandon Gregson and Justin Sines in the uh, in the studio with us today. And we're talking about um, our COVID response. Um, so what we do in Extension, of course, this is the Extension Hour. We talk about our people, our programs, our partnerships. And of course, um, our programs have... It, been interesting. Um, so we've got this imaginary counter going on where we count the number of times that we say interesting and we're up to like, what, a million and About two at least something. a million. <laughs> yeah, because we um, said a lot. Things are things are interesting right now. Um, but we did do um, some really innovative things in response to um, our programming efforts. Um, you know, we couldn't do things the way um, we did them traditionally. And like you said um, in the first segment, the world kind of turned upside down around March 20th or, or whatever, and we just really had to do things differently. We're a traditional agency, and I, right. I say that. Uh, been traditional. around 100 years. <laughs> yeah, we've been around 100 years, and our tradition is is people and people and, and being people people. <laughs> uh, it really, that's what we are. We are people persons. We enjoy, and our, our clients enjoy in-person meetings. Mm -hmm. And so um, transitioning to something it's completely opposite of being having in-person meetings was weird, it, but it was uh, just like our agents always do. We ask them to do something, and they don't say, I don't know how. They say, okay, we'll get it done, and they did that. And so transitioning from an in-person type of meeting structure, programs, educational programs, um, you know, we went to, to online, and – you know, you never never say never because you never think it's going to work <laughs> right. until it does, and then you make it work, and it's well-received. And, in fact, it opens our eyes to be able to say, you know what, we're going to be able to utilize this technology to offer those programs that we've traditionally done in person and reach ten times the number of people more readily accessible than any ever before because they're looking for content and so mm -hmm. i know justin and yourself amy and brandon y'all did that and that was kind of a unique deal and our agents throughout the state did that mm -hmm. in fact brandon you have a specific example of one of the um programs that you did online and you had some people who participated who that was the first time that they had ever even heard of extension yeah actually two of them you know mm -hmm. we spend all year planning for programs and in march when eric mentioned the big flip-flop and shutdown we were planning for 
um, you know, range and pasture programs that happen in April and May, and then also pond ecology and pond management programs. And so we quickly had to get with our partners, our Soil and Water Conservation Board, our Beef Improvement Association that helped us put those on and redirect those to an online format. So there was a lot of uncertainty with that. But what we found out once we got it transitioned was that, you know, while it still was a challenge for a lot of our clientele being, you know, a lot of my attendees are 50 to 80 years old. So technology is not really uh, front and center with them, but we were able to work that through with a lot of those guys. Some of them attended with their kids online so that they made sure that they did everything correctly. Um, and then, you know, what we also saw with that was uh, the attendance of an audience that had not traditionally been a part of extension programming before. You know, you have a chat box there where you can see comments, and there were some in there that didn't really know about extension until they saw this online program and attended. And, you know, it opened us up to, to new people. So there was a benefit to it. Sure. So. And then uh, speaking of far-reaching contact, um, <laughs> Justin decided to take a trip to space and break records with uh, some some innovative programming that you did. So go ahead and talk about that, Justin. Yes, yeah, so I think one of our strong points as agents is our flexibility. So when we shut down here in Montgomery County, it was during spring break, and it was looking like we're going to be in this for a little bit. For a little bit, never thought we would still be in, you know, in this pandemic here in December. Um, but I wanted to provide something for our youth who are at home um, on their extended spring break. So I was like, okay, it'll go about a month. So I put together four activities that would be able that students would be able to conduct while at home without having to go outside in public. So it was from it was supplies that they could find from in and around their house, and so. What I decided to do was I created a space STEM camp online, and it was STEM is another acronym. Yeah, <laughs> STEM for science, technology, and engineering. And so this was a web-based camp, and this was something Forge has not done before. All our we're known for our in-person camps, mm -hmm. and so we put together a virtual Forge camp. Um, and so eat the camp was released. The activities were released once a week, and so I pre-recorded the videos showing the kids how to do the experiments, how to test the experiments, collect data, and they would report back to the website every week. And one of the cool things was we released it on Facebook and we got 1.4 million folks reached through this uh, free camp. And the cool thing was about it was that it wasn't only here in Texas, but we're in all 50 states and 32 other countries. So we had about 15, um, 14 and a half thousand families registered, roughly about 28,000 kids participated in our space STEM camp. So we were able to reach new audiences, just like Brandon said, that weren't familiar with Forage, who didn't know Forage existed. So I like to think of these online um, experiences as a free trial. If you enjoy the experience of a virtual Forage camp, wait till you come to our in-person camp, you're gonna have a blast. It was our free trial. All so right. we're excited to see some of those kids come back to our program with our new year. All right. So in for uh, Family and Community Health, we were getting ready to start our Walk Across Texas, which was kind of already sort of a virtual um, format because uh, they form in teams and they but they don't necessarily have to walk together and they don't necessarily have to um, be in person because they uh, record their mileage online and that kind of thing. So we went ahead and went on with that and that was successful. And then um, kind of a combination of thinking about how the space STEM camp was working and trying to do things uh, virtually. We um, were also working on our Families Reading Every Day project, which is generally an in-person thing, but um, started thinking, well, what if we can do that if there's an online system where families can record the time that they're reading, sort of like they record their Walk Across Texas miles, that they, and then maybe we could have lessons online and that kind of thing. So we were able to move the FRED project um, to create an online system with some awesome web developers at Amazing. College Station that helped us out with that. Um, but that was another way to provide um, a virtual experience. But the, also the great thing about all of the things that we're talking about is that those have been, um, they provide a virtual aspect, but there also still has that in-person option as well. So it's not that these are going to replace the way we do programming. They're an enhancement to the programming that we're doing. And I think moving forward, our programming is going to be um, it's obviously going to be different, um, but we're going to have more options than we ever even thought were possible 
this time last year even. Um, so that will be a very exciting thing as well. Eric, um, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the things that um, the, the timeline and a little bit more about the COVID response more sure. um, broadly. Um, but we're going to take a break and we'll come back in just a few minutes. Um, and speaking of some of the things that we've done in the past too, I would just also add the radio show has been um, a great way for us to do educational outreach because hopefully every show that we um, produce you're able to learn something from it. So we have a whole treasure trove of um, programs because uh, I think we're, we're coming up on like a hundred shows that we've done so far since we've started doing the, the radio shows here on Lone Star Radio. And um, they're, they're all um, showcased on YouTube. So you can go back and listen to any of them. We've got a lot of 4-H 101. We've got some beekeeping and some horse stuff and some cow stuff and uh, and <laughs> we've got all kinds of I mean there's a variety of shows so it really showcases a lot of all of the things that we do in extension so just to mention that that's on YouTube and on the station's website too so you can go back and look at that we're gonna take a break we're gonna come back and we'll talk a little bit more we have the safest food supply in the world Strict laws and regulations restrict the usage of hormones, antibiotics, and pesticides within our food supply. Production agriculture practices and technologies such as the use of GMOs, which is not any more or less risky than conventional crop production, has allowed American farmers to produce more food on less acres in environmentally sound ways. Find out more online at pathtoplate.tamu.edu. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make lives better. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That's Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on the computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. A Lone Star Community Radio. Broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. Welcome back. We're here at the Extension Hour. Our people, our programs, our partnerships. We've got Eric, Brandon, and Justin, and we've been talking about a lot of our COVID response. Um, we also started out talking about our funding, and we get national funding and federal funding, um, state funding, county funding. So we've got a lot of um, folks that we help serve. And we've also talked about how our programming has um, progressed. But and we have been innovative in a lot of the things that we've uh, done, but we also have been very responsive. And so we were talking a little bit during the break about sort of a timeline of kind of the things that we've been doing. So some of it we were involved with specifically here in Montgomery County, but some of it was um, even larger throughout the district and the region and, and the state. So Eric, you had mentioned some of the things that um, we were yeah, doing you know the uniqueness and we talked about this earlier was uh the the adaptability of our agency in relation to different things that occur and our agents uh like yourselves and being uh, were extremely adaptable in the things that we were asking uh, you guys to do in relation to covid 19 response and we talked about the personal protective equipment delivery ppe delivery to our child care or our uh, medical providers uh, initially, when this when when COVID nineteen first you know arose, and so you know we did that, and we were able to help those medical providers stay open and, and be able to see patients, and so that was a positive. Well, what was the next step? Well, the next step was um, the CARES Act, and when the CARES Act was was passed, you know there was going to be some some questions by maybe uh, local governments, local municipalities, and and how they can navigate that CARES Act system. And so our agents within the agency throughout the state went through a training to help answer those questions by county commissioner's courts and, and, and county mayor or, or local mayors and, and individual uh, jurisdictions to help them navigate the CARES Act website and to answer questions and point them in the right direction and so that was being re very responsive as well and it was exceptionally uh, well received by by our, our our elected officials so did we just do that no the next step was uh we we were uh, in the process of uh, beginning the testing sites uh, throughout the state the mobile testing sites being supported by the texas guard and so 
uh, those COVID t- testing sites were conducted on a daily basis, and those samples were then collected and transported to uh, common uh, locales. Uh, a lot of the stuff came into Austin, to Austin Bergstrom International Airport, which is where I was deployed for about 40 days. And then uh, with the assistance of the, the TEKS, which is Texas Engineering Extension Service, our county extension agents were then charged with delivering those COVID samples from those mobile testing sites uh, to the labs. And, you know, there was a daily run to DSHS, which is the Department of uh, Health and Human Services, down there for in downtown Austin for delivery. Uh, for them to run uh, those samples uh, in the lab. Samples were delivered to uh, Baylor Scott and White up in uh, Temple. They were put on airplanes to be sent to other testing labs throughout the state. And so that was a daily, seven-day-a-week uh, uh, process to, to, uh, to deliver those, those samples from those mobile testing sites to the labs for individuals to get the results to see if they were positive or not. So that was helping keep the economy open as well. Uh, then the next next step was we uh, the governor started opening texas back up which is a good thing in terms of you know boosting our economy well when that happens parents go back to work well if they've got little ones they need child care providers and so we were charged with delivering ppe to child care providers throughout the state to help with the reopening of texas well as we move along in 2020 we get closer and closer to the election in November. And so we were charged with delivering PPE to polling places throughout the state. That way those election workers could be safe during the election process. And so our agents did that as an agency as well. Uh, again, throughout this whole time period, our family community health agents were then asked to, to participate in contact tracing to do making sure that uh, those individuals were, were staying safe and we were educating people in relation to exposure uh uh, to people that uh, might, might have COVID-19. And then the most recent uh, endeavor that we've been asked to do, and, and we've jumped uh, in full force, is uh, uh, buy next uh, test kit deliveries. And so what we're doing now is delivering those test kits to local schools and for them to utilize for their teachers or their staff on, on testing as well. We're not conducting the test, but we are the delivery because the unique thing, as I talked about earlier, is we have a presence in all 254 counties in relation to any other state agency. We have that presence. We have those boots on the ground to be able to address the issues related to the safety of Texans. And so that's what we're doing as an agency. Right. And I would also reiterate the idea that, so we're in Montgomery County, right? And we have um, we have a great emergency management department. They're very self-sufficient. They, and we've got a great county government. I mean, and every county does. Um, but we have a lot of um, resources because of our size and our population that some of the smaller counties might not have. So all of those things that you mentioned, all of us were probably involved with those a little bit here and there, maybe some more than, than others. And, um, you know, there were times that we got out our calendars, we got, so we need to be ready for this, we need to be ready for this, we need, you know, we were on standby waiting to um, be available to help if, if needed, um, so that we could be responsive. But then in some of the smaller counties, maybe they don't have that um, infrastructure that we have, and so the county um, agents might have been doing more different things than we were doing too, and I, that's one of the beauties of, of extension that I think that people don't always um, really realize that there's such a, um, a uniqueness to the way we serve every county. So we have we have the state system, but when we also have very um, individualized um, delivery of our programs and our response in each county. Yeah, I mean we're a team, and that's the, yeah. the, the key. Is, is we've got teammates in all of the counties, as I said earlier. We have larger teams, and we have small teams. And I say that, and it's relation to county population. The Montgomery County staff, you, you guys are a, a larger team. You're able to specialize more in maybe your day-to-day operations related to programs. Uh, but we've got more people in Montgomery County in real, as compared to, let's say, Madison County, where we only have a single agent, Chad Caperton up there. 14,000 people up there for a single person to serve as well. And so, you know, but the unique thing is, is this, is we're all on the same page in terms of our willingness to help Texans and, and serve Texans. And and that's why I've said this for quite some time now, is, is we're a team at the, at the county, county level. We're a team at the district level, which I talked about earlier. We're a team at the regional level. We share a, a sister district that we have a lot of professional development type of events uh, with the, the Coastal Bend region, mm-hmm. and then we're, we're a team at the state level. And so that's, uh, that's the best way to describe our agency, and that's what we, we, we really like about 
working for our agency. Right. And as I mentioned, so we serve Montgomery County, but there's also been a lot of team activities that we've ended up doing, um, you know, working with our, our coworkers and other um, counties so that we've been able to do multi-county um, events too. So you guys want to talk about some of those that you've um, a lot of these to. online programs lend themselves to just opening up cross county lines. You know, you, you don't have to travel very far to jump online and attend a program mm -hmm. um, and get the same information that you would have face to face at a field day or or a clinic. So <clears throat> that's what we did when the programs that I talked about that we did back in April for ponds and pastures, we opened that to multi counties. So we would have attendees from uh, all the way down in Galveston you know, attending a program that we were broadcasting, you know, here. And so um, the same thing with pastures, that was a tri-county thing. We were going to do it, but then Walker County comes in and Madison County comes in and all of a sudden we're, we're all three partnering on a, on a program. Um, and then, you know, programs we have coming up, CEU programs like town and country coming up here uh, in December and January. Um, they'll have an online component to them, kind of a hybrid between face-to-face -face and online, and those are multi-county programs. We have 10 counties that, that sit in on that, um, that offer that program to people. So, anyway. Yeah, and um, over the course of, of this year, we've become, we've become experts in uh, Zoom and, <laughs> and Teams meeting more than we ever thought we would be, but the, um, the great thing about that is we're now able to uh, have um, more productive meetings with our colleagues from across the district, from across the region and across the state. Uh, this past week, I've been on a, a Teams meeting uh, working with my colleagues in Dallas and Grayson County in North Texas to put together um, some programs for our, our kids in, uh, that have um, interest in science. And so we're working on a statewide level um, proposal for that. So it's really pushed us to really cooperate even more than what we already have and it has given us better access to do so and better do our jobs yeah and to that point justin you know we've 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 moved forward on on identifying and creating what we call initiative teams and those initiative teams are addressing 20 to 25 hot topic issues that affect a majority of the people that reside in the state of Texas. There may be some things, as an example, a marine program and a marine initiative team that's not going to affect anybody in North Texas, but there's certainly an initiative team with 4-H and youth development that's going to affect all people you know, in terms of uh, for youth uh, participation in our programs. And so some of them are more unique. Some of them are more broad in terms of initiative teams. And they are being created with uh, the hope of being gaining input from county extension agents with expertise in that area, our extension specialist and extension leadership as well. And so that's kind of the unique thing. With that said, though, it still doesn't supplant – as we talked about earlier, the need for us to continue with in-person type of events. There are still people that want to walk in the front door of the Montgomery County Extension Office and give Brandon a sample from a field that says, and they want to know, what is this and how do I get rid of it? And sometimes it's not as easy to take care of those issues at the local level through a distance technology uh, aided type of program. Mm -hmm. Cameras sometimes don't take clear pictures, things of that nature. It's easier to identify a plant if you see it in person a lot of times. And so, you know, it's it's one of those deals to where we're in a transition to be able to adapt to the situation at hand, but also continue with our traditional programming as well. And so the balancing act is, is an ever going process. Yeah. Yeah. And as I mentioned before, I mean, I think one of the, the great things that's going to come out of this is we've learned that we can incorporate different ways to do that so that we can strengthen what we're doing. Um, another thing about teams I think that's important is that we all have different strengths. And so when we work together in teams, we're able to um, really emphasize the strengths of each one of those team members and actually deliver a better project, a better program, a better pr product than before. Um, yeah, real quick before we go to the break, one of the things that I would mention is um, the FCH agents and some of our BLT agents in the southeast region, we've put together um, what we call, we're calling a December to Remember, which is um, an interactive calendar. So um, that's available to email and we'll put it on um, social media and that kind of thing. But each day we'll have a little video that has something educational about it um, for uh, 
for families, for people that are that are interested. We each day has a theme. So we uh, I did one for Thankful Thursday, and there's Wise Up Wednesdays, and there's uh, Money Monday. So there's a little bit of everything um, in that, but. That's one of the things that we've done um, together, and it's really it's really fun to see um, all of the videos that the agents have done for that. So that is available, um, so by email or um, and you can call our office too because we still we're at the office. And if you've got any questions about anything that we've talked about um, today, so nine three six five three nine seven eight two five. That's one of the numbers. There's a few other numbers, but nine three six. Five three nine seven eight two five is one of those numbers. Um, they're at the Extension office. We're also online, Montgomery County, um, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service of Montgomery County. Lots of ways to get in contact with us. Okay, so we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. Last few thoughts. Like, I, So this is kind of my what I've been doing lately with the shows. Like top five things that we want people to remember um, about this conversation that we've had today. Um, so we'll, I'll give you just a few minutes, a uh, minute or two to think about that. Um, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. What can the Better Living for Texans program do for you? You can learn how to increase your consumption of fruits and vegetables, choose foods that are relatively inexpensive and good to eat, make your food dollars last longer, prepare quick, nutritious meals, help your children learn how to eat healthier snacks, and much more. Our program is committed to helping people like you improve your health through providing research-based nutrition education in a friendly, cost-free, and relaxed environment. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make their lives better. A Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station at IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. Welcome back. This is the Extension Hour, People Programs Partnerships. We've been talking about um, lots of things so interesting, interesting times that we are in. Um, and we've talked a little bit about disaster assessment and recovery. So we have some agents who are specifically assigned to de- disaster um, assessment and recovery. Unfortunately, we haven't seen them in our offices just a whole lot because they've been out like really okay. busy doing lots of things. So, um, but one other thing that I would mention about disaster um, relief and the some of the funding that came through Rebuild Texas um, helped fund some mental health first aid. So we haven't touched on that at all, but um, you know, family and community health, that's mental health is one of those important things about being a healthy person. And um, so mental health first aid, there is a training that's available to help people um, help other people who are in crisis. So um, it, the, we, uh, our coworker, Mike McBride, actually is a certified trainer. And so he can offer those mental health first aid classes. And then what we did here in Montgomery County as a response to mental health um, in cooperation with the Behavioral Health and Suicide Prevention Task Force of Montgomery County, which we've talked about in a few shows in the past, um, we did the Community Help Expo, where um, had lots of great information, just behavioral health, suicide prevention. But you know, right now, with all the stress that everybody's under that mental health becomes even even more important so that is one of the things that um, we've been responsive to and that I think is going to have long-term reaching effects and very positive effects in terms of uh, what we do here in Montgomery County and throughout the state so we said top five it could be three to five it could be one or two Justin are you ready one or two what are you with two top five we're gonna ring you Eric another minute to think <laughs> Okay, so uh, the top five for <laughs> things things we want people to know about extension, COVID response, and why we exist, our funding, I think all those the, kinds of things. I think one of the biggest things is that we're we're here. Our doors are still open, and we're going to continue whether whether it be virtual or in person. We're still going to be a part of. Um, of helping Texans better their lives through our extension programs, our people, and our programs um, through foraging development, ag and natural resource, um, family, community, health, and our better for living for Texans. So we we haven't gone anywhere. We might have slowed down a little bit, just a tad bit, but we're we're still full force here in yeah. Montgomery County. 
slow down, but then sometimes I feel like you, you, some of the things that we talk, talk about, like thing that just happened this year, like. Like it's been, seems like it's been really, I don't know, fast, slow. I don't. It's it's, it, it's been a new busy. It, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's it hasn't been the the same normal. I don't want to say it's a new normal. It's just a different busy, a different mm-hmm. normal now. Brandon, what do you think? Uh, I'm not going to give you top five. I'm more of a preparer, <laughs> so I, if I didn't have it sprung on me, I would have you a list. But <laughs> I will say this: this is the one thing that has kind of concerned me. But in terms of response to what I've gotten from some people who've called the office and said, ah, I thought y'all were closed. You know, I didn't think that y'all were available anymore. Regardless of what you see on the media, social or otherwise, regardless of what you hear on the street, keep a positive frame of mind. Call our office because we are still there. If you need hours for a license, because we do a lot of that, we will find a way to get you that still, no matter what our environment is. If you need something identified that you can't figure out what's growing in your pasture or something's going wrong with your pond or something's going wrong with your horse or cow, call us. We're still there. We're still there to serve the people. That's the one thing I want people to always keep in mind. Don't just not call us because you think we're closed down. Mm -hmm. We are there. All right. I know there's been lots of questions, too, about livestock shows and we're coming Mm -hmm. into livestock show season and that kind of thing so we are there call us ask questions because it seems like that information is always being we work a lot with our local fair board and we're validating livestock tonight so we also work a lot with the major livestock shows and we may not have all the information that you need but uh, we definitely hear enough to give you a perspective of where we're at right now in terms of what that potential is for the spring. So, uh, anyway. Okay. Eric, what you got? Yeah, top five. You know, we've talked about, uh, my number one is we've talked about COVID-19 and, and disaster assessment and recovery response. One of the things that we didn't talk about that I would like to include in my list is that's not the only response that we respond to in terms of COVID. We have other issues that we take care of in addition to our daily regiment of jobs in relation to your your title and that's uh flooding and in in natural disasters that uh, people don't realize that we have a presence with that as well i know this team here uh we we've had i think three different flooding episodes in 2020 in addition to covid19 with the melda and i don't you know what was uh, the hurricane uh, there was a number so of them anyway year. and so you know we we, we send agents in and to help support uh, those counties we actually when they're have in shelter need. set up here during Laura in mm-hmm. Hurricane Laura and taking dashboard assessments and dry wind windshield assessments to, of economic loss uh, related to those in, in reporting that and and combining that with uh, a weekly crop report you know and so if you ever see data from National Ag Statistics Service related to crop reports that's done by our county agents at the county level, by Brandon and our ag agents throughout the, the state. And so that's one of the top things that people don't really know that we do. Uh, that's what we're involved in. Number four, you know, again, we talked about this. We have a presence in all 254 counties, and that's the uniqueness that we have that, we, you know, we'd like for, for people to understand that we're there for them in the state of Texas. What the challenge is is those we always have to remind people and in, in, in who we are. And especially as we get into this area of Texas where we're densely populate, populated, uh, the challenge is to make sure that people understand that we are a resource for them. So we've got to continually to promote uh, our program and, 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 and recruit new volunteers and new audiences. You know, if we get stuck in being stagnant, we're only going to have a certain uh, impact on a certain amount of people. And our goal is to continue to recruit new people uh, through our programs to under- let them understand what we bring to the table. One of the, un- the number three, I guess, in top five, one of the uniquenesses is, is an agency for us is we're not only uh, educators of adults for uh, health, nutrition, agriculture, natural resources, horticulture, water, education, those kind of things, but we're also educators for youth. And that makes us even more unique as compared to some of the other youth development agencies and organizations is we have an adult educational audience as well. And so we truly do serve all Texans from infants all the way to the elderly in terms of education because our agents are educators first. 
They're facilitators, they're collaborators, but they're educators. They're professionally trained at the university level with their degrees between the bachelor's, their master's, and some even PhDs. And so they serve as educators. And so that would be one of the things that uh, we'd like to highlight. Number two, we are an agency within the A&M system, but we also like to collaborate with our other agencies. And so we're not opposed to collaborating with USDA, NRCS, Natural Resource Conservation Service, Farm Bureau, local municipalities, local churches, uh, school districts. We work with all the school districts with uh, uh, adjunct faculty status for those young, young people to participate in 4-H events and programs and follow the UIL guidelines for academic uh, uh, eligibility and things of that nature. And so we collaborate with all these entities because sometimes if we can't uh, effectively coordinate a program, we know we have these, these other agencies that would help us uh, address those issues as well. And so we may not be the only agency, but certainly we were one that we like to collaborate. And, and again, I guess number five is, is, is one of the things that uh, Dr. Hyde has been charged to do once he began his role as our director. And, and we've had a lot of input, not only from our personnel within the agency, but for outside uh, external stakeholders as well, is to develop a strategic plan. And so uh, we're in the process of really narrowing down a strategic plan to identify specifically the things that we do. And it would help us as an agency be more identifiable to the general public as to what we offer to the table for the residents of Texans in terms of education. And so those are my top five that maybe, uh, it, you know, people may not know about, but certainly they can take away from our conversation today. Yeah. Well, Eric, I'm glad we were able to take advantage of the time that you were here in Montgomery County. Um, it's been great having you and Brandon and Justin, thanks so much for um, joining us as well. So, um, on the extension hour we like I said we talk about our people our programs our partnerships and I always enjoy uh, the variety of uh, topics that we have and um, the variety of conversation but I think you know this one is one of those ones that we we don't talk about just a whole lot there's oftentimes that we just assume that people they know what they know what we do right but you know people don't know unless you tell them and then the other thing if if we hadn't already been aware of how significant it is, things are always changing. So we've been around for 100 years. We don't look like we looked like 100 years ago. We don't do things the way we did 10 or 20 years ago. Um, it's right. always changing. And so, you know, in a few years, there things may look just a little different, but we will still be um, charged with helping Texans better their lives because that's what um, Extension does. So... Really glad you were able to be here today. We'll be back next Friday on the Extension Hour. People, programs, partnerships. You can also go back and watch any of the recordings because some of them are really good. Some of them. <laughs> some so, of them. Yeah, yeah. All of them are really <laughs> they're, good, they're, right? They're all really good. But, you know, I'm thinking about, so we're coming up on a, a, like 100 shows, and maybe we'll do like a celebration for 100 shows or something. But, um, yeah, some of the early ones I think were, were kind of rough. But, you know, <laughs> thanks to Dick Schistler and Lone Star Radio for allowing us this opportunity to, to be able to um, – reach out to, to folks. And like I said before, that's kind of one of those ways that we're able to provide education virtually, but hopefully it's also kind of personal because you get to see our smiling faces and, and all of that. Anyway, but come see us anytime at the Extension Office. Give us a call. Look us up online. Um, we are available and we're we're from the government. We're here to help. <laughs> we're from Extension. <laughs> we're going to help really. Um, it's, um, so I'm just rambling in the last few seconds here, but um, I think that we all have have very um, servant leader hearts and we really do stay in these jobs because we like helping people. So we'll be back next time. Thanks for listening. Today's show was recorded and broadcasted live on IRLoneStar.com, Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and all rights and ownership are reserved to Lone Star Community Radio. For more information regarding this program and Lone Star Community Radio, visit us online at IRLoneStar.com. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station, serving the community with local programming on TV, radio, and online. If you enjoyed today's program, please support us by sponsorship or starting your own show. Contact us today by phone or text at 936-666. 1084 or email the station at lscrstudios at gmail.com.